vamos a iniciar con las preguntas de Luis Gran, del periodista de la Buenas tardes, señor presidente. Eh, una pregunta en inglés, si puede ser. Sí, claro, pues en inglés no hay problema. Thank you. Um, I don't think anybody could suggest that you haven't uh, changed and faced security in El Salvador over the past five years. But my question is really about where things go forward from here, and specifically in terms of the thousands uh, who have been up by human rights organizations to no discernible link to gang crime who have been to be swept up in the dragnet of arrest. Specifically, I've got a case that I've been looking at of a young man called Jose Duval. Uh, Mata Alvarado, and I can pass obviously on all the details to your team. His mother was bringing food to the prison where he was at. It turns out he'd been moved to the Secot some weeks, months in fact, earlier while she was faithfully bringing food to the prison. Seems like he's completely lost in the system. And there are two Ordenes de Liberación in his name, one as recently as June last year. Uh, and yet uh, he's simply not been released, even though the 20 days is obviously now six months ago, by which time he should have been out. Um, I'm wondering what, if, if your intention is to sort of work on the legal side of things, uh, assuming you win today, and that you are president for the next five years, to start unpicking those sorts of problems and errors in, in, in the, the state of exception. And secondly, if you also plan to only serve one more term from here, and if you don't plan to lift term uh, limits altogether. Thank you. Well, it's important to say that every police in the world, because I find this some, somewhat amusing when they say, oh, but you know, in El Salvador, they arrest people, and some of the arrested are innocent. And I'm a little baffled because I wonder if in the UK, all of the arrests are of guilty people, or your police some, sometimes arrest innocent people. I mean, I bet there will be a percentage of people arrested by UK police, the police of the government that you work for, and they will arrest sometimes innocent people as a mistake or because they, were, they had a, a wrong tip, or, or, but they will go to a judicial system. If there were no arrest of innocents in any, in, if there was one police in the world, one for police force, UK, uh, Spain, France, you name it, any country, the US, Canada, any police force that has only that has zero percentage of margin of error, they're all, they only arrest guilty people. Why, you, why will you need prosecutors or defense or a justice system? You won't need that because the police is perfect in your country. So every country in the world will have an imperfect police. Now, it is different when you have in countries that uh, promote ethnic clean cleansing, for example, or, or they promote or they arrest political opponents, or they arrest a minority. But, but in our case, all of the arrests are made to end the bloodshed that, was, uh, that, was, that we lived for decades, and we have ended it. Now, did our police made a couple of mistakes? Of course they did. That's why our judicial system has been freed innocent people and they will free every innocent people that, that the police has wrongly arrested. And we have already freed 7,000 people. Now, I would, I would assume that the, the criticism may come from a, a, a hypothetical country that doesn't have any, any arrest of innocents. But I'm sure that in the UK, they do plenty of arrest of innocent people and then they are proven innocent in, in court. But sometimes, and we have seen a lot of cases in the U.S., in the U.K., in Europe, that they find them that they're innocent 20, 30 years be, uh, after being convicted because they found some D DNA evidence. So what does that mean? That means that you shouldn't arrest criminals? No, it means that police made a mistake and some retributions have to be made to the people that have been arrested wrongfully. But we don't... Um, we don't think, we think it's, it's weird or we're baffled by, by the criticism of something that you know, you well know, that any police in the world would make, which is a small percentage of, of innocent people getting in the net. One point on that, of course, yes. though, is that 75,000 people in the space of a year isn't regularly arrested by police anywhere else in the world. And that 
this is a unique situation with unique powers given to the security forces to make arrests on site according to criteria de deemed by them. Yes, of course, because we, you, you don't live in the world murder capital. So when you don't live in the world murder capital, it's because you don't have enough murderers to, f to fill a prison like ours. Because the difference is that in the UK, the UK is not the world murder capital. El Salvador was, by your own accounts, the world murder capital. So if we have the world murder capital, the most dangerous place in the world, the, the place in the world with the most murders, why is that? Because we have the place in the world with the, most, with the biggest amount of murderers. So of course, you cannot arrest 70,000 people because you don't have 70,000 murderers because you're not the murder capital of the world. But we did have 70,000 murderers, and that's just a, 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 a number that coincidentally is the number that we arrested. Every study made by the World Bank, by the, by the uh, NGOs, by the experts, way, way before our government established that there were at least 70,000 gang members and 500,000 collaborators. That was established not by our government, but by NGOs, by the experts in the, in the, in the, in the, in the topic. They always said, El Salvador has at least 70,000 gang members and half a million collaborators. So you would expect that to end that, you would need to arrest 500, 70,000 people. But of course, we want to be careful and don't arrest the lady that probably helped because she, she thought that she needed to help because her life was in danger. So we're sparing 85% of the tally that your or find that the organizations that you finance established way before our government. So why do we have the biggest incarceration rate in the world? Because we ended, we changed the murder capital of the world, the world's most dangerous country in the, into the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. And the only way to do that is to arrest all the murderers. There's no other way to do it. Well, the other way to be to kill all the murderers, but we're, we don't have death penalty, so we have to arrest all the murderers. So you say, why, why is such a big number? Well, what do you expect? That we arrest 100 people and we leave 6, 69,900 gang members in the streets and suddenly the, the murder rate will drop? Or do you expect that we, because we're Salvadorans or something, because we're second class citizens or something, we have to die? They have to kill our families, they have to kill our children, they have to, because your uh, liberal ideas of what a democracy should be have to be respected, and we, since we're not using your recipe, then we have to be killed, we have to let our children be killed, we have to let the bloodshed to go on for 50 years because of imported policies from your countries, because your countries are lecturers in the 80s, the war. You had a fight with the Soviet Union, had nothing to do with us. What did you do? You financed El Salvador to fight a war be between us, between brothers. And, they, and we, killed each, we killed each other and 85,000 Salvadorans died. After that, a million displaced. They went to the U.S. into ghettos. They formed the gangs, then they deport the gangs. Gangs come here. You sent us another recipe. Law to don't arrest minors. Okay, but all the gang members were minors at the time. So gangs grew, and then they terrorized the country. They started killing people, and we became the murder capital of the world. Nobody could solve it. We, we took the recipes from the OAS, we took the recipes from the UN, we took the recipes from the European Union, we took the recipes from the United States. None of the recipes worked. More bloodshed, more people were dying. So what do we do? Okay, we do something and we save people, and now we're the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. But suddenly something's bad. Oh, but you shouldn't do that. You should do what I think you should do. Why? If it, not only we have the right to do what we think is right and the, what the Salvadoran people are going to decide whether or not they want this day in, in free elections, but also we've proven it works. And you haven't proven that your system works in our country. Might work in yours, I don't know. But it doesn't work in ours. It's like I told one time, um, a member of the European Union, I know you, 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 you Brexited that, but I told a member of the European Union, you take your best government, choose your best government, I, I, know, I don't know what's your best, the best government in Europe, but you choose your best government. Same people, same talent, same experts, same will to do things 
the right way. You take your best government and you put him to govern Afghanistan and tell them, okay, you govern Afghanistan the same way you govern this European country. They'll be dead in a week because you cannot govern Afghanistan like you govern Europe. So stop trying to, to, to make us use your recipes because they don't work here. You have your, you have your own system. We're, we don't tell you that you shouldn't have a monarchy. I mean, we're fine with your monarchy. We, we love your monarchy. It's fine. But we don't say, oh, you shouldn't have a monarchy and you shouldn't have hereditary titles. In, uh, why? Because it's your country. You can do whatever you want with it. But suddenly, we have to do what you want to do with our country. So what I'm going to uh, finish the question is that this has been proven by all of you and by uh, all independent sources. El Salvador was turned from the most dangerous place in the world to the safest in the Western Hemisphere. That's not a small feat. And that's not done easily. And nobody in the world has ever done it before so fast and so clean like we have done it here with no civilian casualties. So, I don't know. I know it's different. I know the numbers from the UK and ours will be different for maybe a couple of decades. But we're doing our best here and we're really trying and the Salvadoran people today are going to vote freely in free and fair elections and in full democracy and choose their own path. Thank you.